What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It has been, honestly, going on two months now uh, since I've done a podcast, and it is great to return and return with a special guest from Carnival. This is Maddie. You may know her as Thread. How you doing, Maddie? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing great. Uh, things are getting back to where I want them to be, and uh, I couldn't think of a better podcast to bring the show back than with you, so... Thank you. Awesome. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I mean, I got to jump right into the first question here, and that is, what was the main motivation for you to um, pursue being a monster? Um, so, I was actually a Haunt fan when I, uh, like, way back in, like, 2008, I think was the first year I went, 2007, 2008. Right. I was, like, 11 or 12. And I was actually too scared to go in, into any of the mazes. Like the street monsters were enough for me. But after that, um, the year after, obviously I was a little bit older as a teenager and I went religiously like every single year. Um, so when they brought like Necropolis in, um, right. vampires were like my shtick as like every other basic girl in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, when I turn 18, I'm going to join, I'm going to join that scary farm. And I want to be a vampire at not scary farm. And I did. So it's like literally the year after I graduated, I went into open hire and I didn't get being a vampire, but <laughs> I, did, I did join haunt that year. So That's that was awesome. like my big thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's just such a rich history of vampires that a lot of people just absolutely fall in love with them. I mean, you look back at like you're looking at like back in the day with Dracula and then you mm -hmm. look to where it came now and in between, you know, the Lost Boys and Fright Night and all these great vampire films. And mm -hmm. it, it something about vampires. I mean, I it, it's been I've been preaching it and Sammy and I have been preaching it. We wanted to return to to Horn or not Horn Nights. I'm sorry. Not Scary Farm. But if they, <laughs> they should bring them to Horn Nights too, because that would probably bump up their sales. But uh Honestly, yeah. No, no but I not I, I've been waiting for them to come back to Not Scary Farm. It's been way too long. I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I still like have that like weird, like vampire session. So like if they ever bring it back, I'm, I'm there, I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you, you watch and you, and you know, there's shows out there now, like uh, what we do in the shadows, one of my favorite shows on, on TV right now. And Same. you know, there, there's just different ways you can approach vampires. You can make them really scary and gory. You can make them very seductive. You can make them funny as hell. Like there's just, there's just different approaches to do it. Uh, initially when you had the, obviously you, you did mention that you didn't get to play the vampire, but when you had like a, did you have any set mindset? Like if you were to be casted as a vampire, what kind of vampire you would have been? Um, honestly at that point I was just going to take whatever they gave me just because I did love the event so much. Um, but now like thinking back, if I could do go back and do it again, I would either want to be like one of the like aristocratic vampires or um there was actually a, a guy who was in necropolis who was like the aviator right. and i kind of wanted to do like uh like a girl version of that i don't know if you ever seen like treasure planet yeah um but i wanted to be like kind of like the captain of obviously like scary vampire but like the captain in that in treasure planet where she was very like hoity-toity and like mm -hmm. this is my spy and like that kind of thing <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I feel that, man. I mean, that right there is so cool. I mean, I, I love, like I said, vampires, they have a special place in my heart, and Dracula being the OG, I, I Knots, nah, what are you doing? Let's bring back vampires already. We're ready. Right. For another <laughs> vampire maze. Um, so you get you get in. Uh, what is your first uh, assigned role to you at Not Scary Farm? So it was 2013, so I was in End Games. Nice. Um, which is like maze necropolis. Right. <laughs> um, and I actually ended up, I came in a little bit later in the morning. So I actually pulled like the last makeup spot, like in the park. Nice. So that was kind of like where I didn't like get to choose what maze I wanted to go in. They were like, you want to make a spot? Well, this is where you're going. And I ended up being a rich cannibal is what they were called. So I wore like a little corset and everything. And I was like, um, what was it? It was like, I was above everybody else. So there was like the people who got thrown in the arena. And then like, I was like one of the people who watched like the Thunderdome of right. people act and everything. So it was really cool. I, I really enjoyed that maze because it was, um, 
like really it was all like the Johnny Plague music and stuff. So yeah. I could be like dead tired and like still awake. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You just get that adrenaline worse that just hits you right in the wherever the right song comes on, you know? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, th- there's something about that maze for me when I went through it. Um, it, it gave me, and it's just me being a nerd. Um, it gave me some mean Mad Max vibes and kind right. of like, you know, Mad Max kind of meets like a cannibalism sort of thing on it. But, you know, I mean, th- that was really cool to be kind of put into that world of kind of that post-apocalyptic uh, feeling and, and seeing all this go down. Like it was just, it was, I remember walking through that and just being blown away by what I saw. Like I was like, they really pulled off a great original maze. Like I wish more haunts would do stuff like this. You don't see enough originals these days. Um, and I, you know, walking through that, I was like, man, I can easily see a sequel to this happening in the future. If they ever wanted to do one, I can easily see them bring it back for, you know, a fan favorite maybe. But I, I remember going through it and just enjoying it. Right. Oh yeah. It was, it was one of my favorites even like before, cause it was an older maze. Right. So when I would come as a guest and everything, it was, it was one of my favorites. Yeah. That's so freaking awesome that you were part of. I probably even seen you. I mean, before I was even <laughs> doing this gimmick right here, I was straight up just fanboy without a camera. You know what I mean? It was just like walking through all these mazes, not having to worry about recording. And now it's like, it's a whole different life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so definitely. Um, so 2013, you get in, uh, you're an end game. Uh, I'm assuming you had a fun, great season. Was it everything that you expected plus more or did you like, were you craving more? Were you like, you're like, how can I step this up next year? Like, what was your, your initial thoughts for going into next season? Yeah, I really, um, that year was a little rough for me just because I was working at a restaurant or like a diner in my real life job. And right. that involved a lot of talking, but my voice was gone. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. Like the whole season. So I could only talk in like a real, like nasty gravelly voice, or it was like a tiny whisper. There was like no between. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like the rough part, but I was hell bent on being on streets. So I was like, well, next year, like, that's what I'm going to do. I am auditioning for streets. If I'm in a maze, fine, but I'm going to make sure, do everything in my power to make sure I nail my audition to go on streets. So that was kind of like my role into the next year. <laughs> nice. And the so you go into 2014, uh, the mm-hmm. mindset of like, I'm going, I want streets. Like, this is what I'm going to try to aim for. Um, obviously, you would, you know, whether you got streets or a maze, you didn't care. I think you just wanted to be there in general because that mm-hmm. environment is just so fun. Um, exactly. So you go into 2014 audition. Where do you land next? Fiesta Village. Oh, throwback, <laughs> man. Let's bring that. <laughs> let's bring that back as a scare zone. No more dance party. Like I want. I want to. I want to be scared every inch of that park. Oh, I know. I. I. I don't get me wrong. I love the. Da- I love the dance party too because like it's just like music, so you're right. vibing. But yeah, I really wish that there was so much. There was like they could have really like dug deep into like the horror of that area right i think it would have been awesome but you know (laughs) especially digging digging deep into mexican folklore i mean there's so many you know urban legends and whatnot like obviously the biggest one is la llorona most famous urban legend out there Um, Mm -hmm. to even do their own version of that like would have been really cool and to kind of theme it around Mm -hmm. that or something or you know there's a lot of you know a lot of mexican folktales they could have gone off of um hopefully fingers crossed we get a scare zone there again one day but until then um we got a dance party and uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, I've caught myself some nights, you know, blowing through the dance floor cause it was quicker to walk through, but I, you know, little groove in me gets out. So, you know, I gotta, you know, I just <laughs> go with the flow, but it is what it is. Right. Um, Fiesta village. What were you casted as in Fiesta village? That was your first street position. Uh, what were you casted as and how excited were you to just be on streets? Um, I was a, like, generic sugar skull i guess was kind of like the paperwork okay. um i tried to go with this whole like sacrifice to like virgin thing um did it translate no <laughs> 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 but that was like the like ideal and the idea in the back of my head and so um i just kind of went like with that route um nothing too special i ran with my with my friend emily who actually ended up being kind of like the face of fiesta village when it was around okay um before that and she actually speaks like fluent spanish and everything so i kind of and i i do speak spanish but it's like really 
broken Spanish, so it's not really cute. <laughs> hey, you so probably I, speak better. The only Spanish I know is enough to give me food. <laughs> so I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's like that and like just a couple other like little tidbits because um, of where I work and everything. I kind of have to figure it out. Right. But so I would really just like ride her coattails kind of the most time. But it was it was a blast. I mean, just being on streets, period, I think is super fun. And I really got to deal with like kind of a more of like a possessy kind of vibe. Right. So that was fun. <laughs> oh, that. Yeah. I mean, I, I do remember the sugar skulls. That was mm -hmm. something. um because I, I do remember that vividly because I was at the time failing high school Spanish. And, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it was something that – that was the one thing I think I took out of that class was when we made sugar skulls. I'm like, this was actually fun. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm enjoying things here. Like, I can't speak the language, but – and I, it's funny because I, I am Mexican in my heritage, and I just, I just can't speak Spanish. But <laughs> it is what it is. You know, I get around, so – <laughs> and luckily for me, like my stepsister, she knows like Spanish fluently. So like every time I'm going somewhere, I'm like, hey, please translate for me. <laughs> right. You're like, here. You yeah. Go, you go like, ahead. hey, they speak Spanish. I don't speak a word of Spanish. You speak great Spanish. Uh, communicate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, I definitely do miss Fiesta Village, though. I mean, it was cool. It was uh, a different vibe than you saw from most scare zones anywhere you ever went. Um, so that was, I think what made that scare zone very unique was it was something completely different, something you haven't seen at a haunt. And mm -hmm. I, I just remember vividly of, even when I worked there in 2016, uh, I remember going into the break room right there and just kind of talking to everyone and, and everything. Even before I started this, like it, it was, I, I always had just an interest of the minds of the people that play monsters. Like it's just, it's something that's just fascinating to me. I don't know why it's just some people really like sports. Some people really like freaking uh, playing video games for a living. I just like getting in people's minds and exploring who they are. Right. Just, I love that. I, I just, I, I, I do. I just, it's, it's, it's entertaining to me and I hope others who watch are equally as entertained and they get to know you better as uh, the person and the monster too. And when they go back and see you next season, uh, it's just, you got probably a line of fans down the, the way just lining up to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> So, man <laughs> yeah. uh 2014 uh fiesta village uh i'm assuming obviously your first year on streets you had a great season that year oh yeah another great one uh in the books uh what do you do going into 2015 now what is your mindset do you want to stay in fiesta village do you want to move away to go somewhere else what is your mindset going into 2015 I do want to stay in Fiesta Village and I wanted to do like a La Santa Muerte like character. Right. I audition and they send me to Carnival. Uh -oh. Welcome <laughs> to the carnival. <laughs> anyone like, who anyone who works Carnival knows that song is just traumatizing. Oh my gosh, I know. I don't ever actively listen to that song, and I pr probably like say it almost word for word. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah you, you know, you hear it like what? Probably like a million times a night and it's just like even when i'm sitting in that zone i'm just like singing along to it and that's just <laughs> it's just me hearing it over and over and over again but no that's that's uh so you land carnival uh do you start is this the birth of thread right here or we do we go did we have another character before we went into thread yes it was the birth of thread but not as we know her now right um I was in a mask. Um, my character was like, I was still like the knife thrower. Okay. Um, which is, I've carried a knife my whole like career. Right. Um, but I didn't really start incorporating it until like later into my clown career. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, I totally looked different. Like, um, but my character had like a regular, like name I was like, wanted to be Russian. It was a mess is the short hey, answer. <laughs> I'm Russian. I like it. Something different. And, right. And it, but it's like, I did a terrible Russian accent. Like it just, <laughs> it didn't work. And, um, there was a girl who was there. Um, uh, her name was Lore. Okay. And, uh, she was the, the depressed clown. So like her thing was being like a sad clown and her character's name was buttons. Okay. And so I kind of like, we kind of became friends and kind of started scaring together because we had the same vibe going on. And I was kind of trying to like talk to her about my character and she's like, well, you need like a clownier name. Like that's not like, 
my I think her name was like Natalia or something like in the beginning. Right. And then she's like, that doesn't sound like a clown. <laughs> so I was like, You're right. Um, so her name was Button. So I was like, okay, well, let me do something that kind of like matches buttons. And I went with thread um because buttons and thread yep um and then i just added a, like an e at the end just to make it look more like a name instead of like a thing yeah and that's kind of where it started and so i was like thread the knife thrower for that year <laughs> ah no and that's the birth of what we know today honestly mm-hmm. it's the birth of uh some would say now honestly uh a staple to carnival oh <laughs> so <Thank you. laughs> it, it's the birth of of a staple to carnival right there. I, I, I don't. And again, we, I, we were talking a little bit about this a little bit before we started, but you know, there's certain characters and haunts that, you know, if they were to move other places, it, it would just kind of in the beginning, feel out of place because you're going to miss that character in said locations. Right. Um, with you. I mean, I would love to see you go on and, and go and, and, take your talents to other different areas and create new characters and what, but I have to be honest, if you were to leave carnival, I think I'd be a little sad inside. too. Oh, <laughs> I love carnival though. So I don't know. I, I always like just leave it up to the gods for like the next year pretty much. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's definitely a place that is now my home. So it's, it's, no matter where I go, it's always going to be like, oh, Maddie, the girl from Carnival. You know? <laughs> it's not, I'm never going to be like the girl from Ghost Town or the girl from Camp. It's going to be I'm gonna like, be, oh, no, I'm going to I'm going to be the one guy. If I ever see you, it's going to be Maddie, the girl from Fiesta Village. <laughs> no, definitely. Like, it, that's, that's like my secret. It's like, I don't really mention my Fiesta year very much anymore. So it's like, everybody's like, oh, my God, you were in Fiesta? I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now it's just, it's iconic now because there's no scare zone there. So you were like one of the last to actually work there. I know it went on for a few more years after, but you mm-hmm. know, you were one of the last remaining couple years of, of, of Fiesta Village and we haven't seen anything since I believe, what was it like 2017, 2018, I believe. But I think it was 17, 17. Yeah. That was the <laughs> last year they actually had a scare zone in Fiesta Village. And now we're in 2022 we don't know what the year holds for this year, but in 2021, we didn't have Fiesta Village back as a scare zone. So maybe they're saving it for the 50th. Maybe they're building something up. Maybe they got something in the works. We don't know. There's only time right. to tell. But um, that being said, if Fiesta Village did come back, would you consider ever going back? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would be cool. Like, it, dep- it would depend on, like, the cast. I know that right. sounds, like, so, like, snooty but if like no because you want to you want to vibe with the right people and stuff too you know you want to make connections so you can scare together and you guys can have a good experience together exactly so it's like yeah like if the right people were there like i would do it but if not then eh, it's cool it's cool you're like yeah i got got carnival now i got that i got that (laughs) locked down man joker who yeah exactly (laughs) i specifically threw a jab on him because he he watches this show and i know he's gonna watch this episode so uh hashtag (laughs) uh hashtag get joker on the podcast (laughs) let's get that that's okay that's like my life story i always throw jabs at him (laughs) if you don't throw jabs at joker then what's the meaning of life right i live to piss him off i do and i i do it very successfully too so um 2015 you get on carnival you have a good year Red is born. Mm-hmm. 2016, the year I worked there, uh, not as a monster, uh, something even scarier, Park Services. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I do remember working nights uh, in Carnival some nights. Um, mm-hmm. I do remember wanting to be at that zone more than anything because I just had a weird obsession with killer clowns for some reason. Um, and it's just, it's something that at the time of my life, I thought it killer clowns were fucking badass. I still, I still do think that, but killer clowns are badass. I thought they looked cool. I thought, I thought each character in Carnival was very unique and told a, a, a different story every time you kind of approached said characters. Mm-hmm. Um, you return, I, I, I'm going to go on a limb here and say you returned to Carnival 2016. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. How did um, how did the how did that progress changing wise? What happened the next year to to upgrade the character more? So my story for Thread has kind of just progressed out through the years. So um, 
buttons, the girl floor, the girl from 15, right. we decided our characters were sisters. Um, so that's always been like kind of a thing, but, um, 2015 was actually her last year because she moved to Canada. Ah. And yeah. So she is actually fun fact. A, she still buttons a clown, but at Canada's Wonderland's carnival. Good for her. She's taking it on the road and she's yes. got free health care. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so she's over there. So her character like died. And I guess from what I remember, her story now is that she's in clown hell over there. Oh. Yeah. If I remember correctly, that might have changed, but I think that's what she told me. So, um, my story in carnival here is that the ringmaster killed her to get back at me because i was um well me thread um i was stealing like money from the carnival because i was trying to get me and buttons out of right. the carnival so ringmaster caught thread um killed her sister in spite or whatever and then actually um took her act away so she didn't really have a job or anything she was just kind of like piddling around the um carnival right um so thread change i looked a little more like rough that year is right. like the best way to explain it um it wasn't like anything that was too like crazy but my big character change was that like instead of just being like a silly like ah clown like i became like this real angry sad like lost it like i blame myself for killing for my sister dying like right so I would do a lot of like talking to myself, a lot of like aggressiveness. And so it was still thread, but just like angry thread. Angry thread. <laughs> yeah. And we're going through all, let's go through all the emotions with thread. Like right. one year we're going to do like sad thread. One year we're going to do like excited thread. You know, it's just going to be awesome. No, I, that's cool though. I mean, I, I going back a little bit, I'm thinking of a little, it, you know, it, it just gets me excited when, you know, certain people go to different haunts and take a character and kind of evolutionize it, but keep their same backstories and whatnot. It's mm -hmm. almost like the MCU, like, you know, characters <laughs> are crossing over into other, in this case, parks and continuing right. the story on there um, mm -hmm. and kind of her own personal clown hell over there, which is really cool. Um, mm -hmm. If you ever get footage of her, I want to see it. Like, I would love to see that because I'd love to see... I, I'll probably look up footage. There's probably stuff from 2015 of Carnival of you and her. Um, mm -hmm. But to see you evolve in the next coming years and then to see uh, her go on to do things over at another park in another country for that being said. But uh, mm -hmm. that that's so cool that you kind of still continue to tell the story even though you're in two different areas. You know, like one is right. already dead and living her hell while the other – blames herself and is kind of grieving on her own. And I, I think that's, to me, I find that stuff fascinating. That's like a crossover to kill all crossover <laughs> for haunts. Right. And it's, it's awesome. Cause um, she actually is like really big in the Lolita community. So like with conventions and stuff. Right. And so she actually has her own YouTube and like all sorts of crazy stuff. And she, she has a lot of really good documented stuff on her YouTube from, from her year at haunt. So definitely recommend it. Well, up. She's plug like, it in so we can, t we can have all the audience <laughs> check it out. Yes. Okay. So she's her YouTube, I think is lovely lore. I know that's her Instagram. Okay. Um, but yeah, she's big on Lolita. She does Canada Wonderland's carnival. Um, and she's literally amazing. She is such a cool person. I definitely would recommend watching her stuff. She's probably going to watch this episode. You know she will. I hope so. I'm going to send it to her. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, watch this. <laughs> watch this. We talk about you. <laughs> I, I, that, that's awesome, though. I, I, I think one of, the, one of my dreams, too, um, speaking on other parks, is to hit haunts in different locations. Like, you know, I first want to hit one haunt in the States and then travel overseas and, and see what other people bring to life. and. Now that I know uh, we got some former Knots people working over there, I mean, I definitely have to try to go visit one day. Uh, let's hope I can make my way up to Canada. That's awesome. That'd yeah, cool. no, definitely. Uh, 2016, we got a new thread, a new, uh, a new look, and a, a new attitude at that. Um, a different thread that we saw in 2015, and now we evolutionized and uh, revolutionized the character even more in 2016. 
How do we do in 2017? What, what's next for Thread? What's the next chapter in Thread's story in 2017? So that's my, I don't want to say break year, but I actually auditioned to go to camp. Okay. Because <laughs> I really wanted to do the, um, what is it? The Mother Witch? That's what I wanted to okay. do. Um, and I got Ghost Town. <laughs> Oh, I audition for one place. I always end up somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> so in 2017, I was in ghost town as the cat saloon girl. I wore like this really pretty like, blue and gray dress. Okay. And that was uh, my first year in a prosthetic and it was awesome. There you go. <laughs> Something new. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I was over carnival at that point in my life is like back in those years, like Carnival was kind of like the stepping stone zone okay. of getting into like a different area. So that's why I auditioned for somewhere else. And I ended up landing in Ghost Town. And I thought that was going to be my home forever. And yeah, as we know, things changed. <laughs> the Carnival, the Carnival uh, called you back and they said, uh, we need you. We want <laughs> you. We need you back home. Right. <laughs> so 2018 comes around. And, and you mentioned something about Ghost Town. Uh, or about Carnival originally being the stepping stone, but I think 2021 proved that I don't think it's a stepping stone anymore. Oh, yeah, not anymore. It, Absolutely. Is, it is now one of the top tier zones. And, it's, and in my eyes, it's always been one of the top tier zones because, like I said, any zone that uh, if I had an opportunity to scare at, it would be Carnival because, like I said, it would. I think I'd fit the most and be the most myself in Carnival. Mm -hmm. If I came up with something... Um, to, to do with that zone I, I think honestly just me being the person that I am would just take who I am and just up it like 10 levels so right. it's just I, I think Carnival one of my favorite zones and it's one zone that I look forward to and I know a lot of people this past year that that had the opportunity to work there and I got to see a lot of people progress their characters and stuff but 2018 the Carnival calls calls back uh, what, what's the next chapter for thread? I mean, obviously you had a great time on ghost town, probably. I mean, ghost town, a lot of people want to be on ghost town. A lot of people dream on being a ghost town. Um, you go from that transition from carnival to ghost town to carnival again. How did that go in those last three years? Was it a, a different kind of change from what you're used to in carnival to obviously ghost town? Yeah. Like, um, the thing about ghost town and i'm gonna get so much like flack for this but like coming from carnival where you're in like bright light all the time and you always have to be on or if you don't like you look like you're just like yourself right so going into ghost town it was such a change for me just because i mean i don't want to say it's easy that's not the word i'm looking for because there's I mean, just there's a lot more fog <laughs> and darkness right so it's to easier to scare to. people right, right? So it's like, um, but it's funny because it's like you're in the fog. You kind of can't see. Yeah. <laughs> and and actually, some people wear contacts with the masks and, you know, it's. Yes. And uh, um, actually, I remember, I don't know if Lucio remembers this. I doubt it. But there was actually like a couple, like a time or two where I would, I went to go like scare somebody thinking they're like a monster or a, a guest in fog. And there was a time where I definitely like went after Lucio like he was a guest and I was like whoops <laughs> oh man I mean come on you, if you know I, I I told Lucio this last night when we recorded our show um I told him listen 2019 you creeped the fuck out of me hands down you did and it was it was me paying attention more to your character 2021 I knew exactly who you were and I wanted to fuck with you more than anything and I accomplished that goal <laughs> Let's just say Man. I made him eat a funnel cake in character. Oh, I'm obsessed. I love that he always stays in character too. Like, there's no like, even if he is just like messing around, he doesn't. Oh, he's still like, in character. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't break that like that character mold yeah. at all. I love it. Now, now Lucio, uh, the person and the monster, uh, two different people, but two very talented people. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Um, I agree. That's awesome. So you got to, so you got to get a little, little crack on on hostile. Uh, he probably legitimately got scared knowing him. <laughs> Ooh, sorry, my lights are resting around. Oh, you're you good. Go. You're good. <laughs> um, so you had a great year in, in Ghost Town. You got to live a lot of people's dreams. Probably one of your dreams at one point, too. Obviously, going as a fan and this being one of the most iconic scare zones in haunt history. Um, and you got to actually scare on those streets and got to at least do it. At least you could say you've done it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Not many people can can say that, uh, and a lot of people, you know, 
much like yourself, work very hard to get to that moment. Um, mm-hmm. So going back to Carnival in 2018, um, you're out of the shadows, you're out of the fog, you're back in the bright spotlight. Um, mm-hmm. What was next for Thread that year? Um, at that point in 2018, I decided to kind of just give her like a whole like rebirth. And that's kind of where, um, like, that's where Thread Today kind of started. Okay. It was in 2018. So I was like, chop all her hair off. And so I had like the little curly bob because it's the 1930s and that makes sense. <laughs> and nice. Um, I started there and then I just wanted, and I actually was, that was my first year in makeup too for Carnival. Okay. Um, so I made like a lot of um, facial expressions. Like, that was where I really like wanted to focus my, work is like all of like all on my face because when you're in a mask you don't really get that opportunity to do that right so that's kind of where that started um I was a barker actually that year um was where I landed so I was able to keep on the story um because the barker I don't know um I actually heard this from another clown but the barkers are actually supposed to be the lowest on the totem pole when it comes to like the clown hierarchy okay because that's like the easiest job you can have a barker is literally just a guy like standing on the like pedestal advertising the shows that's like okay. the thing. so it's like you know in like the old timey days like if that's all you could do then that's what you're gonna do right <laughs> so yeah. that was so I, the continuing on thread story it's like okay so the ringmaster like tortured her enough here's your job but you're never gonna get back to where you were um and I kind of just like lived off of that. So it was, I still had the knife and that was still like my like thing. Um, but I was just kind of going with like that, like crazy unhinged. This is, this is it. Like I'm still trying to get past my sister dying. Um, but you know, life goes on. So you have you're to, like, I have to put in work now. So it's like, right. <laughs> you're like, I, I have to work for this jackass now. So here we go. <laughs> and she, and she, hates the ringmaster too so like um uh, we'll get into it like later on this in in like thread story but mm-hmm. um she actually wants to kill him <laughs> so she has like a revenge plot like what's my motivation that's like is revenge so i'm uh i'm hoping one night we can actually see an execution just uh, hands down let's do it <laughs> i hope so too <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be... Towards this for nothing <laughs> you're like we've been building this story now for like five years like it's time (laughs) exactly oh man uh so you're you return to carnival 2018 you're in a new rebirth version of you we have some of the original origin story there but we got a new kind of um version of Mm -hmm. of thread uh thread 2.0 at this point Mm-hmm. and you're in makeup now you really want to start focusing on a lot of these uh the more facial expressions and you want to really kind of make that a staple of the character now and really whatnot and i feel like over the years that we've seen you progress and whatnot we've had seen i think that's something that's a staple of your character i even i think i even have footage of you opening night running towards my camera doing some funny ass facial expressions <laughs> which i thought it was hilarious <laughs> um, but I've, I've had the opportunity and pleasure to watch you do a lot of great things in carnival. Um, and just to see your scare tactics and whatnot is, is just, um, it's awesome just to sit there and just observe and just to see how people do things different. Um, mm-hmm. cause you go to a ghost town and you'll see them do something way different because they have more shadows and fog where in my opinion, the two hardest scare zones this last year, I think to work were, uh, Goring twenties and, um, carnival due, due to the fact that. It's nothing but light. You don't really have anywhere right. to hide. You're out in the public this entire time. You're trying to sell this story, um, and you're you're trying to scare guests. And uh, in your guys' case, either scare or make them laugh, um, mm-hmm. which is I think that's what makes the zone so unique. You don't see a lot of zones who purpose intentions are to make you either get scared or laugh. It's usually just straight. Let's get scared. Um, right. So going forward into uh, the year 2019. Um, this was easily uh, a breakout year for us. I mean, we 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 returned to knots and we started covering it a lot. Um, we would make our rounds every so every weekend. We would go around see what everyone's doing, how everyone's doing. Twenty nineteen, uh, you enter this year. What was the biggest, the next big step for Thread? I feel like that was my golden year. I feel like that was the year that I really just had everything solidified. Um, 
my running partner from ghost town who's uh mark mangia okay. um vulgar he's like he's like the staple clown ever in carnival right. um he actually made his way back and we actually were scaring like i said we were scaring together in ghost town and we have like a really good like scare chemistry together if that's a thing <laughs> <laughs> hey no some people you just you just vibe with immediately right and so he came back so he came back to carnival and so me and him were like unhatching like all this stuff so the story progresses in her in threads um backstory was um so vulgar mark he's the um owner of the carnival so he's above the ringmaster which is why he has like the cool little like jacket right and um so thread sees him come in and he's actually rolling in to like kind of see what's good with the carnival and she kind of becomes like his lap dog i guess i mean uh, because she wants to be able to have power above the ringmaster right. and so if she's in good with the owner then it's kind of like oh i don't have to listen to you because i'm cool with the owner i'll just go talk to him it's yeah. fine right and so that's kind of where like the backstory started and that's where the vibe's been ever since right um, I, I dig that a lot mm -hmm. yeah so that's like really her that's really like her jam nowadays is just like oh like she acts like she like owns everything now but i mean really she doesn't really have like a title or anything but <laughs> uh, assistant <laughs> to the regional manager right <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, that's no, exactly it <laughs> that's it right there assistant to the regional manager <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was her thing and um I got some really good um, advice from um, Brandon, who's in management, because right. um, I, I asked him, I was like, what can I do to really like take myself to the next step? Because I just I always want to be better. Right. Right. And he told me that, like, he's like, I really want you to just really embrace the whole being unhinged thing, because like I could tell you want to be there, but you haven't like, fully gotten there yet. And I really took that to heart because he's like, again, one of the like hot legends. Right. And, um, and I really, that's like really just been my main focus from 2019 on is just the whole, like, I've officially lost it. Like sister's dead. I want to kill the ringmaster. I don't care who I have to get through to do it. Um, oh, that's awesome. you know, and, and I have power and like yeah. all that kind of stuff. So just like, crazy with power is kind of where she's at now from 2019 to now i should say so you know a lot of what i'm hearing too um i, I don't know if you get maybe gain inspiration from this particular these particular characters but um usually when people think of clowns the first two you usually go to joker and harley quinn right is there any inspiration or did you have any inspiration from either of those characters that you kind of I mean, because, you know, a lot of a lot of a clown story, too, especially ones who go off the hinge or whatnot, are mm -hmm. it's, it's that one bad day. And that's mm -hmm. obviously anyone who knows the Joker, it, it all it took was one bad day. And that's why he is the way he is now. Was there mm -hmm. any like when creating the character or ever evolving it over the years? Was there did you see any? Did you watch any Joker? Did you read any comics or anything that kind of maybe gave you a little bit more inspiration to kind of add aspects of those characters into yours? Mm -hmm. yeah like um uh, my boyfriend played um arkham oh uh, arkham knight oh, yeah. yes and so like i've never played that game but i watched him play it just to kind of see like what the deal was right and i really and i really do take a lot of inspiration from joker and harley quinn like i know that's like so cliche but it's not trust me but, i'm a diehard joker fan so if right, that like, if you say awesome. that it makes me happy <laughs> And I do. And I really tried to actually kind of pull that whole like Harley Quinn vibe for a minute. Um, I don't think I'm um, like as a monster, like cutesy girl enough. Like I'm too like, or I'm aggressive <laughs> and I mean like uh, to really like embody like that Harley Quinn vibe. But I definitely like watched all the movies that just recently came out, um, watched Arkham. Um, I haven't really like read any comics. Um, the Killing Joke, I watched that just to kind of see like I know it was like it's, really good. Oh my god, <laughs> that was one of the the first like actual graphic novels I remember reading and just falling in love with it. And the first thing I said, and this is how big of a nerd I am, um, the first thing I said when I when I read that graphic novel was Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman, and Mark Hamill, Joker, need to do a movie with this and. 
Wait. A couple years later, that's exactly what happened. And that same year that movie came out, I got to meet the voice of Batman at a Comic-Con. Oh, my God. I would have died. And I looked him right in the face, and I told him, you, every time I read comic books, you're the voice that I hear. You are <gasps> the person that I grew up watching and listening to. I loved you playing in the video games and everything you've done as Batman so far. You were, And I told him this straight up to his face. You are by far the best Batman to ever be. There's no oh one that's ever going to beat you. Oh, I bet you that was awesome. I'm uh, like to make it even better, this is just me. This is me being a nerd. Big time nerd. <laughs> I got a picture with him. Oh, of course. Yeah, no, definitely. Yep. Like, you, you have to at that point. I have to. <laughs> And then I and then I caved in and, and bought an autograph from him too because you know it's how many times am I going to say I've met Batman? Exactly. So no, I, I so when I hear back to my point though, when I hear when you take you know inspiration and you've seen a lot of the movies and you've seen and you've watched some of the video games and you know um, you've taken inspiration from a, a, a character who's so sadistic, so psychotic, like the Joker. You mm -hmm. know, one of the greatest villains to ever grace comic books and everything. Um, that's, that's really cool. Cause the Joker, in my opinion, is honestly the best clown to ever live. Mm -hmm. um, oh, absolutely. There's so many iconic ones. Obviously you got Pennywise, you got the killer clowns from outer space, you know, you got all these different clowns, terrifier. Um, but Joker to me, because I know he's more than just psychotic, he's actually a very smart person, mm -hmm. but he plays it off being psychotic, which makes him insane. What makes him one of the greatest villains to ever live. So. Right. Well, and me and Mark too, um, our big di that when we were come, when he came back, we were talking about like what we were going to do. And, um, our characters are like, kind of like a couple, like, but, but that's kind of our driving force is like, we want to do that, like real toxic, like couple, like they definitely are not good for each other. So right. very Joker, Harley Quinn ish. Yeah. Um, sometimes it really, we, but it's never like just one staple of who's who, like sometimes, sometimes it's me kind of being more jokery and he's kind of like, Oh my God. And then like, it right. kind of just it, like the dynamic changes depending on the day. Right. But that was definitely like our main inspiration of our, like um, of our characters was just like Harley Quinn and Joker, mm -hmm. but like toxic times 2000. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> I think someone who's, who's took in that level of, of more of a powerful person would be Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn over the mm -hmm. last couple of years with Suicide Squad, Birds of Prey, and then the, the second Suicide Squad film. You've mm -hmm. really seen that character adapt in those three films, who is a character that was very popular as it is, but when Margot Robbie portrayed the character, it just kind of blew up even more. And oh, yeah. it made a more stronger uh, female villain. And, and you, you don't really see that a lot. You're starting to see it more now, but back in the day, you didn't see that a lot in comics, where you mm -hmm. didn't have a lot of strong female villains. But because of a character like Harley Quinn, who is so popular now with so many teens and audiences across the world, mm -hmm. um, there is there's more uplift for a, a, a really badass female villain. And right. Harley Quinn now is kind of, I would say, one of the top tier people that you look at for something like that. You've been seeing that level of intensity and grow every single film she's in where she's being more of kind of the leader rather than the shadow person. So right. to see you kind of incorporate that into your character and, and kind of be that, you know, some days I'm the shadow person, but then some days I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of, you're kind of taking that and, and evolving it in your own manner, which I really think is freaking awesome. Like I said, I mean, you can't talk, you can't talk comic books around me cause I'll go on for hours. <laughs> um, nice. No, I think that's awesome. And it's cool to see uh, every year that you're evolving. So, 2019, you established this uh, whole different side of Thread, a new mm -hmm. updated version of Thread, and a new kind of a way to get back at the Ringmaster. Mm -hmm. I wish I can say, how does it go in 2020? But we all know how that went. <laughs> uh, it didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh, Not Scary Farm canceled due to uh, this uh, very very horrible virus that I wish it would just go away. Um, <laughs> I think we all are at this point. We're just like another variant. Come on. It's like, yes. I'm like, bro, can we just figure this out? Please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, science has to be there by now. Like, 
we have to be getting close. Um, right. But 2020 doesn't happen. So obviously with 2020, it was a different approach to haunt season. Everything was really drive through or social distance. What did you do in your time off to kind of, and it was, it must have been nice to kind of have a year off too at the same mm-hmm. time because you know it's a nice it's always nice to kind of take a year off to kind of recoup and kind of maybe come up with new ideas. What did you do in 2020 to either keep yourself busy or just have fun as a guest again? So the thing is, is that I actually work in healthcare. Oh, okay. So I'm not a nurse, but um, I work in healthcare. So I went to like taste of Halloween and stuff, but right. um, yeah. So I whole business was just dedicated to like COVID. <laughs> so Trust me, I know my mom's a nurse, so I hear it all the uh, time from her too. <laughs> so I, yeah. So I feel it. like I never actually had to deal with COVID like firsthand, like, um, uh, the company I worked for at the time, um, they had everybody separate. So they were, there was like essential clinics, meaning like, we'll see you for everything, but COVID symptoms. Right. So like, if you were like diabetic or you had a earache or you broke a finger or whatever, right. and then there was fever clinics, but the essential clinics, which is what I was a part of, um, we all had to figure out how to do like virtual visits, video visits and all that kind of stuff and how to get that improved, like approved and stuff. So I really had my focus like on that. I piloted, um, that for pretty much for my whole office. Um, so that was really my main focus for that most part. And then actually we ended up doing vaccines shortly after um, like towards the end of the year, right when it started opening and we were seeing probably about like 400 people a day. It was like, right when co- like vaccines were available to the public, like we yeah. were, it was out the door, like 400 to 600 people a day, not including the patients we already saw. Talk about a stressful work environment, man. You're just <laughs> yeah. Constantly just one after another, just getting them all out the door. And mm-hmm. yeah, no, I feel that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of, I had to really commit to my work at that point. Right. So I didn't get to go out as much as I would have liked to. Um, but I heard like, um, LA haunted hayride. I heard that was awesome. I saw lots of pictures and right or drive through stuff. And so that, that was cool. I was living vicariously through like some of my friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was cool though. At least you got to experience, in my opinion, the best event during the, uh, haunt season of 2020, which was taste of Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think hands down that was their best tasting event, um, too. Yes, I agree. But to put, to put it in a more emotional turn, what was, I think what was the best thing they could deliver to haunt fans was not only the, the little walkthrough they had in CS, which displayed a lot of haunt memorabilia and props and whatnot, but ghost town being filled with fog at night. I- like I remember going there and like I, I just remember being so quiet and my mom looked at me and she goes, What's wrong? I'm like, They're they're shooting out fog and there's no scary farm and I miss it. Like I should be here. And it was like a Saturday too. I was like, I should be getting scared right now in this alley and I'm not. It's just fog and I want <laughs> monsters and I want haunt back. Like I was pouting like a kid. <laughs> uh, but it, it was such an emotional, I, I think, thing. And, and to, for them to kick off the tribute store, which is a fantastic idea. I, I, I hope they continue to do that every single year because um, mm-hmm. I, I, I love seeing all the original art. I love seeing all the exclusive merchandise. Um, for them to do the tribute store and to really uh, open up the park more and really just kind of deck it out for Halloween, it was just it was awesome. Even if you were lucky enough, you would hear some carnival music every now and then when you walk through yes. that area too. Yes, so. it broke my heart like hearing it. I was like, oh, like I missed my zone. Yeah. But um, yeah, oh my gosh, I was so heartbroken. So like uh Rocco is his name, like the rock golem thing. Right. Um, he was in camp during Halloween and he was actually in end games my yes. year, and I was like, I was like, oh my god, it's my little buddy. Like <laughs> <laughs> that, and then um me and Naomi, who's GTS Lucy, she's like my best friend. I love Naomi. She is such a very talented person. Dude, like talk about like one of the staples in Ghost Town. Like it's it's her. Like oh, she is her and Billy. That's that's the the duo yes. you can never break up. Yes. Oh, exactly. It's like they're so awesome. Yeah. Um, but we were sitting in we were like sitting there in like the um the graveyard and like sitting by like the little like casket or the coffin that's sitting there we're all like man like (laughs) (laughs) little tear just comes out of the eye while you're you're eating a funnel cake (laughs) (laughs) 
I know. Um, yeah. So like we were sitting there like just pouting over it. It was so sad. I was like, I miss hot man. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And, and I think another thing that was very torturous walking by too, was looking at the log ride and <gasps> I know. knowing that it usually gets decked out during Halloween and you just couldn't ride it because at the time they weren't letting people ride rides. Right. <sighs> Heart. It, it was it was that that was probably I wouldn't say the worst haunt season I've had, but it was a sad haunt season. Oh yeah, just because things weren't the same. They You're just, just kind of like, eh. yeah. It was just it was just like I was trying to find so many things to keep the audience entertained and new experiences. I even this is how far I even went for people who didn't want to go out. I even went on Roblox and tried <laughs> finding haunts on Roblox, and I found a lot a lot of creative things that I was very shocked and surprised about. I even found a replica version of Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights on there. That's dope, actually. It, which, <laughs> honestly, I was blown away. Like, I was, like, legit. I had the headphones on, full blast, videos recording, and I, I was legit getting scared. That's Oh, my God. It just, I was trying to provide experiences. I know some people were still a little uncomfortable going out. I know some right. people, you know, were kind of either high risk or whatnot, and they were right. just, they didn't want to chance it, so... I was trying to come up with experiences so everyone could enjoy a haunt season. Whether you were at home or going to places, like anyone can enjoy something for free. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, no, absolutely, that's so cool. I didn't know that they were doing all that on Roblox. I, I, I was blown away. <laughs> it started with the Halloween Horror Nights, and then I was like, I wonder what else I can find on this damn game. And I started right. looking, and I found a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> That's like sick. That's so awesome. And they're very creative on there too. I, I I couldn't I couldn't do any of that. I tried. I tried so hard. I was like, I like the Halloween Horror Nights. I think I'm gonna try to make Not Scary Farm. And like five minutes into building the entrance, I was like, I'm I can't do this. I'm over it. I, was like, I cannot do this. I don't have nearly as much talent as these guys do. Um, it's so hard. Oh, it really it it's something, man. You have to be like a freaking engineer to know what you're doing to, in that game. It's like. <laughs> I thought this was a kid's game. Like, <laughs> and all uh, these kids are going to be like engineers nowadays. Like, I know. They're going to grow up to being like m building the next freaking Empire State Building or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's, that's insane. So, 2021 comes around. It's pretty early on in the season, and we're still undetermined whether or not we're going to get something. Mm -hmm. uh, midway through the year, not starts hitting things. And then we start getting promo videos. And mm -hmm. then we start getting maze announcements and then scare zone announcements and then show announcements and then boom, tickets go on sale for the 2021 season of Not Scary <gasps> Farm. And we are back, baby. The energy yeah. that opening night. Oh my God. <laughs> it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. Right. Oh, I know. It was so exciting. Um, I was so happy to be back. I'm such a nerd. Like I'll talk, I'll like start messaging people about haunt. Like, and, like I'm not even kidding. Like right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So what's the plan, everybody? <laughs> I mean, look what we're doing right now. It's, it's February. You and I are talking about haunt <laughs> in February. Like exactly. Once a haunt fan, always a haunt fan. Right. Exactly. It's like, I can't just not talk about it. It's such, been such a big part of my life for, yeah. I mean, technically nine years, if you want to count. Um, whatever the 2020, yeah, um, I mean, you know what following you still showed up and you showed, you know, thread was there in spirit. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, but I was like, I was so stoked. I really struggled to like get back into it. I don't really know why, but I just felt like I wasn't like doing what I, I what I normally do. Like I would do the motions, but it, the like emotion wasn't there. It really took me like, I think, I don't know if it was just like, COVID anxiety or if it was like I don't know but it was just it took me a minute to really kind of get back into it. I would probably say like week like like the end of week two week three I was like oh, okay like I'm back in my groove like this is how it's supposed to be and this is thread like man, go ahead back in black <laughs> cues by ACDC as she walks out that third week man <laughs> she's back <laughs> Man, that's, yeah, I definitely like struggled for a minute though. I was kind of like, ooh, like <laughs> opening night. I, I just, I the energy with the opening ceremony and everything was unreal, and it was a little bit emotional for me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, us covering this channel now, going on five years, you mm -hmm. know, we do a bunch of coverage on everything, but it's knots to us is more is more personal than any other haunt. 
Um, mm-hmm. One, because it's literally in our backyard up the five freeway. It's right there. Right. Um, so that's our, that's our home haunt. That's our, that's our park. That's the one we try to go to the most every season. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have met so many talented people that work in mazes and streets behind the scenes, um, everything to bring that event to life. And the biggest thing I look forward to every year is even the new people I meet, even friends I've been friends with for some time. The one thing I look forward to every year is watching all of my friends scare. Right. Um, and you know, it's one of those things that, you know, I, I used to go to these things to get scared. Now I just go to have a good time because I know so many people that it makes it a little bit more fun for me. Mm-hmm. I can, I can sit on a bench. I could sit anywhere, stand in a corner or something, whatever, and just observe and just watch my friends do what they do best. Right. And I've been fortunate enough to, uh, capture a lot on on film i've been fortunate enough to see a lot with my own eyes um and i've just i've been very fortunate like i said fortunate enough to have a show that can provide a voice for you guys for Mm -hmm. everyone who wants to tell their story but has never knew how to do it i'm glad that i have that platform that people can do that and Mm -hmm. so going into 2021 uh we were just we didn't care if we got any footage or not. We we were just happy to be there. Like, mm-hmm. that's how much of a fan I am. Like, I would easily drop the camera just so I can enjoy a night no, in a heartbeat. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be for me filming 24-7. I just want to go enjoy my friends, have a funnel cake. Uh, this season, which was a great invention, uh, a Jack and Coke slushy. Oh, I know. I heard of the oh, bomb. God. <laughs> I have, I'm a, I'm a huge Jack and Coke lover. And when I saw that in, ironically, in Carnival at, uh, at Coasters, mm-hmm. um, I saw that and immediately was like, I have to have one of those. And that's what made <laughs> Haunt Season even better for me. It was like, <laughs> I get to sit down now and enjoy my friends while I have a cold beverage. So, yes, it's like- Okay, it's like, all right, it's all coming together. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all making sense now. But I think the one thing I enjoyed a lot this season, um, this year we had your rivals, Goring 20s, a brand new scare zone for the 2021 season. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the thing that I had, a, and, I, and I wasn't able to make every night, I think I did a total of six nights last year, but mm-hmm. the, the nights that I went and from other people that I've talked to and everything, the rivalry between Carnival and Goring 20s was as real as it gets. Oh my gosh, it wasn't even funny. It was like You're looking at the matchup was, of the century right there. Yes, and it's it's so funny. It's because it's that like they have like this little like award backstage of like who the best scare zone was for yes. the night. And I loved I had a person on the inside who would send me that every single week and it would just be amazing just to look at Carnival and Goring 20s back to back. I think even right. one week they even give it to you guys both. Right. And I was like, I think they did. I think they're just yeah, they were to mess like, with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing that's so funny is because so like for the people who've been in Carnival like for a minute, like like me, Neil, Kim, all of us, uh, we Carnival's actually been in last buildings for like the last couple of years for that. I don't understand so, why. Like you know, I don't know. It just like I said, um, Mark told me a long time ago. The thing about Carnival, and this is like pre Goring Twenties, obviously. Um, is that if you guys are off even just like a little bit, it, you're you're not going to look good. Like that's, that's just it. You have to really commit. Like even if it's like a silly walk or you're skipping while you're walking or you're talking to yourself while you're walking or whatever, right? Right. Um, and if you're just walking, if you just take a minute to just kind of walk normal and like take a breath, everyone can see that. Right. So you don't really get the opportunity to have low energy. Mm-hmm without it affecting the rest of the zone. So, which is why I think we get last, we used to get last place a lot. Um, that was a big key word in that sentence. Used to. Used to. (laughs) We're tough dogs now. Yeah, (laughs) man. (laughs) No, but, um, I remember the first like weekend or whatever we got it. Me and, uh, Neil and Kim were like, Oh, we're like, Oh my God, we got the, we got the best scares of the night. We're like, Woo, the only one we're going to get the whole run. Oh man. And then Kim's like, no, we'll get it. Like, one or two more times and then we actually ended up like winning it by one point 
Yeah, one that one point, man. That's, <laughs> um, what what was cool to me too is uh, you had a lot of new faces in Carnival this year. A <laughs> lot of new faces that came from uh, a little old ship in Long Beach called the Queen Mary. <laughs> uh, but we knew the stakes of the Queen Mary. We knew that we weren't getting a haunt from them this year. So a lot of the talent that was from Queen Mary came over and tried something new. And a lot of them ended up in Carnival. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them blew me away. Oh, yeah. Phenomenal. And like, drop the hat, uh, phenomenal. You guys, I think when you, when you mix the aspects of what you guys originally done and what they brought to the table and you Frankenstein them both, you guys, no wonder why you won the Haunt of the Year or the, the Scare Zone of the Year. Right. Because, you know, you're taking two different energies and you're combining them. And you're making this new massive energy um, that was just something that it was unreal. It was, it was, every time I went there, I laughed at something. And I was just <laughs> mesmerized, pun intended, because there's a maze right there named Mesmer. You're right. <laughs> mesmerized by what I saw out there this year. Um, mm -hmm. I think this was the first year that I finally spent more time in a scare zone other than ghost town. And it was just so the sole purpose was I didn't want to miss a thing in there because I felt like if I missed something, then I, I wouldn't be able to see it. And I know I missed a lot with the other days I didn't get to go, but the fact that I got to witness what I witnessed this year um, was unreal. I mean, I talked to one of my good friends now. Um, you may, you probably know him. Oingo. Um, yeah. Which was ironic with him because his girlfriend was on the rival side. Yes. Oh my gosh. I know. I would see her all. The, we would see each other like all the time. And like we, backstage, we were all cool. We we're like, yeah, whatever. But yeah, when it came to being out there, we we're all like, no, we're better. No, we're better. Yeah, <laughs> man. I I love that rivalry. We need more of it, especially because you guys were literally border to border with each other. Mm -hmm. So that that fun interaction, I imagine, every time that you guys got the opportunity to do stuff like that was probably a lot of fun and what made this year a little bit more memorable now. Oh, yeah. Um, Clayton, who was one of the mob bosses in um, in Goring 20s, we would because their border, our borders are the fountain, right? So they have to stay on that side of the fountain. We have to stay on the side of the fountain. Right. But we could hear each other. So we would sit there and like yell out to each other all the time. Were we supposed to do that? Probably not. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> I could tell you this, diehard fans probably got a kick out of it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> and if you can impress the fans and entertain the fans, then you're doing something right. Exactly. Uh, oh, absolutely. I got to talk to a little bit about 2021, and, and we're going to talk about where Thread was in 2021, but I got to talk, I got to bring this up because it's, it's one of my favorite things to hear, and I want to hear different people's perspectives of it. Absolutely. The iconic fight between Carnival and the Goring 20s. <laughs> the invasion of carnival into the goring 20s tell me a little bit about your mindset in that tell me about uh your involvement in it and and just overall how that was so i heard about it last minute because i actually was able to go in there with our most important investor right um and that was just a really small group of people and we went there initially we went in there initially to like do like a scene or whatever with them um that ended up be, it, I don't say it didn't work out. That's not what I'm trying to say, but like it was just too small of a group. So that very last night, they were like, "We're gonna go invade Carnival or Carnival Guard Twenties." And as you know, that actually used to be Carnival's turf um, right. Back in, in 2016, yeah. right? And that used to be my favorite area to scare too. So I'm so sad that like a different. Well, I mean, and, and, and to, not to mention, you guys had a very back in like 2016. You guys went from the railroad track by Supreme Scream. All the way to the railroad track by uh, Charles M. Schultz Theater. So right, exactly. It, that was it's, that's a, a massive. So it was room for everyone to kind of have their own areas. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. No, but it was like super. Like for me, I found out super last minute. So I, I literally like I'm not even kidding. Like sprinted, and I don't really run. <laughs> and I have asthma, so I'm still like, y'all want to? You're like y'all want to? <laughs> <laughs> you you want to? <laughs> you're trying to catch your breath but you're trying to be tough and it's like right i just sprinted all the way by freaking accelerator <laughs> give me a minute <laughs> exactly so i sat there and i was like oh and then like 
um, our manager gave like kind of like a couple of like the veterans kind of like, hey, make sure you rally like rally people back in because you don't want people to linger too long. Right. So I was one of those clowns like, hey, let's go back. Okay, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so it was great. It was fun while it lasted. But yeah, it was like super fun because it totally didn't happen. <laughs> what happened? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so something about uh goring 20s and ghost town yeah that was those guys yeah absolutely those clowns, man. they always <laughs> cause a ruckus <laughs> yeah. leave the clowns alone man because they're clowns you're gonna give them a little hassle or leave them alone. <laughs> they're doing their own thing that that's awesome so now back to uh, our timeline with thread 2021 uh this is the return season you were mm. off for a year everyone was off for a year energy was easily in my opinion at 150 percent this year with everyone in that park um mm -hmm. what was new for thread and what did you want to try to accomplish next with thread um i really am just kind of riding the wave right now um i i just always want to just keep getting like scarier and more aggressive and more a b c d f g right like right. just kind of stick with kind of stick with what works for me and kind of just go from there. Um, I kept joking with Mark because we did all we had all this like new phenomenal talent um, that joined us this year, and especially the Queen Mary people. Right. Um, we would we sat there and we kind of just joked around saying that like we're like, are we the husbands now? We have all these new people, and like we're the husbands. We're too <laughs> old for this now. And like, so that's kind of like we're like we're 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 going with it, I guess. It's just to kind of I don't, I still want to bring in that little bit of funny. Um, yeah. because thread is such like, when I first started, I didn't want to be funny at all because I feel like there's so many people that kind of like rely a little bit too hard on that, on being funny. And so I wanted to be the opposite of that because you would expect a clown to be funny. Exactly. So I've lately just been kind of trying to like, kind of find like my happy medium between the two, um, and go from there be because threads character is such a angry intense like character um some of the funny or clowns like to like kind of mess with me and i love doing like skit little skits and gigs on the street just for that moment just to feel like our um carnival is alive because um we actually are the only zone that doesn't really have like we have a backstory but it's not as like solidified and as I broadcasted, I would say it's like ghost town, green twenties, camp, et cetera. Right. Um, so my focus really now is just to kind of get us all into that mindset and bring us all in together so we could be one big unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like you got a lot of good, good future plans as far as what you want to accomplish next and what's the next chapter of this storyline right. that you want to try to accomplish, especially, you know, we're only two years away. Uh, from the fiftieth, which is going to be, from what I hear, rumor wise, massive. I mean, oh, I'm hearing okay. rumors of a lot of legends returning. I'm hearing rumors of a lot of original things that people loved returning. I mean, everything's up in the air. We don't know for sure what's going to happen, but exactly. Uh, I'm hearing rumors of a lot of people leaving in the fiftieth. They're calling, mm -hmm. hanging up, and calling quits. And you know, it's a little sad to even think about that. You know, but I know, man, just to see, you know, but you. An example of how I know we're in good hands is the next generation of talent coming up that we've seen progress in Carnival. You know, oh yeah, that 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 experience versus that rookie, and when you put them together and you work together, it makes scare zone of the year, mm -hmm. hands down. And it makes me happy to think that there's people as passionate as you are and once were back when you were in high school and coming into it now and it's like you just must you got to be you got to feel proud that you, that same energy is still continuing to this day oh yeah absolutely it's literally like i said it has been such a part of my life for so long i just don't even know what i would do without it i used to be one of the people that was like oh i'm gonna hang up after the 50th because now i think that's gonna be my tenure is because of because of covid i think uh, i don't know i don't remember COVID right mean, yeah yeah um i yeah i think so because i think this would have been my 2022 would have been my 10th year if there was covid right if no covid i mean and then so i think the 50th falls into my tenure so i was thinking about doing it but then again at the same time it's like i'm having so much fun like yeah if it's not that much stress like 
on my real life, then I mean, why would I, why would I stop? You know, I've always looked at haunt to be more, I, I have my day to day life and mm-hmm. haunt was my getaway. Right. Haunt, haunt was something that I can go to get my mind off things and just enjoy what I'm watching, what I'm looking at. Exactly. Um, with storytelling through mazes, with storytelling through the scare zones, with just overall a storytelling aspect of things. Mm-hmm. It, and, and and again, I, I know I keep referring back to it, but that's why I like bringing people onto the show because going into things now, you know, I may have not known a lot. Like, I didn't know a lot about your character. I, I knew who you were. I knew your your the, the look you had. And I knew you carried the knife. Um but I didn't know the specific reasons. And now that I know specific reasons and now that the, the world knows specific reasons, <laughs> um, it's, it, for me at least, it makes it a lot more fun to go into Haunt now knowing this character's motives and why this character is the way this character is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, going into, with that being said, going into 2022, you know, we're, we're a little under nine months away. Uh, the clock oh. is slowly ticking, <laughs> little by little. I mean, I I gotta I gotta get by other holidays first. Like um, Valentine's Day is not really my favorite thing. I feel that, and just because I'm alone, <laughs> <laughs> right? What I'm doing on Valentine's Day is probably playing video games or watching a movie. Hey, you and, know what? That's what I do every day. I even have, I'm even in a relationship, but I'm like, <laughs> you know what? Let's just, I don't care. Like we're, I'm going to. Today's a, some- t- you're like, today's a me day. Right. Like I'm, yeah. that, that is your gift to me is I am going to hang out by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, like my uncle always said, me time is very important. Yes, absolutely. You got to have the me time to just relax. And like today, honestly, was the busiest day of work I've had in a long time. I've been nonstop from. 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. Because even after work, I had to go to recycling and take all my cans. And oh, man. I got home, and i that's when I was like, oh, shit, yeah, we, we I want to do this podcast. Like, I've been waiting <laughs> to do this podcast. Let me – so, like, I was laying in bed just kind of being lazy, and the time was coming to 6, and I was getting tired, and I was like, nah, I got to get up. I got to do this. Like, <laughs> I got it. I'm motivated. Like I, I want to do this. I got to do this. Like I, I'm excited to do this. It's been a while. Um, going into 2022, though, where are we going to see Thread? Can we? Are we? Are we? Can we expect to see her back? Hopefully, or you know, is it up in the air? Uh, do we? Do we? Are we trying to go different places? What? What's the plan? You don't? Are you just? Are you not quite there yet? Is it too early to tell? Like where are we looking at right now? My expectation, right as of right now today february (laughs) um is to go back as thread um but i leave it up to i leave it up to management and the gods if they want me somewhere else i mean if something else sounds cool down the road then come summer maybe we'll see what happens but right now i think probably i'm gonna probably stick with thread i honestly might well, plan probably right now is to probably stick with thread until the 50th and then change until then. Um, but again, that's always subject to change. So we'll see. I just thought of the biggest slap in the face the company can do to you if they wanted to. What? Let's uh, let's put all the Goring 20s actors and let's put them in Carnival. Let's put all the Carnival actors and put them in Goring 20s. Oh, my God. Imagine. <laughs> oh, my God. That would be the ultimate. That's like, OK, who's going to win this year now? Right. Like, it's like, okay, now let's see all your different elements. Let's uh, see what happens. <laughs> you guys aren't clouds anymore. You guys are 20 uh, prohibition people now. Right. <laughs> you're not prohibition people anymore. You're clowns. So let's see how you exactly. guys can make that work. <laughs> uh, no, shout out to every scare zone, uh, going 20s as well. Um, I remember walking through there, and I'm a huge fan of that era. And, you know, Al Capone, the prohibition. I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a history buff as well. So just that. Same. For them to bring that to life and add a, a horror element to it, which was mm-hmm. awesome. And can we talk about the speakeasy? I mean, I, I was convinced there was a real speakeasy. I still, <laughs> I still am. I'm not giving it up. The blind tiger is that what uh, that's what it's called? Dude, yeah. It it I I looked around for the first two weeks trying to get the password. Oh my god, that would have been so cool though. I really <sighs> kind of wish they would make a speakeasy or like. Do something cool. Like, I, if there was a real speakeasy, oh, my God, I would lose my mind. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and I, I would be so for it. I, what was the funny thing is I remember we had this conversation with a lot of the Queen people. Um, mm-hmm. 
if anyone knows, Queen Mary is famous for secret bars. And to get right. to said secret bars, you have to have tokens. Um, I thought it would be funny if uh, I, I told this to Joker specifically. I was like, mm-hmm. you have tokens. You should take a token over to Goring 20s one night and hand it to them and ask them to try to get into the secret bar. <laughs> and I, I think that would be the funniest thing because it'd be so not it'd be so out of out of the air out of left field and I think they would just be confused but then if they know Queen Mary they would just probably laugh at it too exactly you'd be like you know what here it is <laughs> yeah. that, that, I mean that I, I was so tempted one night too to and I didn't know enough people in Goring 20s to actually comfortably go up to someone and tell them that but um, right I definitely, I think if it comes back next year, I, I might try to do that for content. That would be fun. I hear there's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of new kids over there. So I don't really know like too many people over there. Right. But I mean, yeah, like if they've been hot fans and they've been to Queen, I'm sure they're going to be like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so, this is great. Um, My favorite portion of the podcast, uh, I love hearing, and I know with this scare zone, there's probably been thousands upon thousands for you with your years working, but mm. I love hearing the funniest things that happen to you during haunt, uh, with guest interactions and whatnot. Is there one off the top of your head, a story that is just something that made you just almost break character or maybe did break character and you, you got to scare so good that someone pissed their pants or something like do you have any <laughs> of those? I mean, I, like I said, you've been working in carnival now for a few years and you, you've probably had thousands upon thousands of interactions and moments like that. So What's one off the top of your head that you can think of that is hilarious? You see, it's one. Of, that's like one of those questions. It's like when you're in an inter- interview and they're like, "So tell me about yourself," and then you forget like everything that's ever happened to you. In you're your like, life. "I I don't know myself <laughs> enough." <laughs> like enough. actually, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I will say though, um, um, Matt, who not Joker Matt, um, other Matt. Oh my God, what's his name? Um, he's funny. He's really funny. Oh my God. I know, I know exactly who he is. Kazoo. There you go. Kazoo. Oh, my <laughs> I was God. Like, I know his, see, again, I know his name. I know exactly oh, who he is. Laugh my ass off this year. Oh, my gosh. So, Thread and Kazoo are, like, the yin and yang of each other, right? So, like, Thread is, like, angry. Get back to work. This is what we're doing. Like, stop messing around. <laughs> and Kazoo is the complete opposite. <laughs> the complete opposite. So, there was a time where I was messing around with, like, just, like, some guests on the planner. Like, you know, just kind of doing what, doing whatever, right? Yeah. Where does Kazoo come with, like, two fish that, like, flop? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> Freaking Dr. Strange opened up a portal and boom, there he was. So I sit there like talking to a guest or whatever, like scaring them or whatever, you know, just interacting. And I just feel like on my shoulder (laughs) and I turn and I have a fish flopping on my shoulder (laughs) and I fling it off. And I know it's kazoo because like who, who Who else else would do that? Who else? And I see him and I grab the fish and I'm literally not even kidding, chasing him down the runway, like smacking him with it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah. I was like, you're gonna kill you. You're gonna not do. I was like, can't believe oh, you're doing man. this to me. Like, you know, obviously, I said more angrier things, but yeah, I just, I, I don't know where the kid gets the energy. Um, I don't know where he figures this stuff out. <laughs> and there was nights where he just had me busting up laughing, and <laughs> yeah, that guy, that guy is is something special, man. That's uh, that's definitely one Carnival needs to hold on to right there. Yes. Uh, I love, like, I love Kazoo's energy. Like, like out on the street, you wouldn't think that because like Thread and Kazoo, like, well, like Thread, or Kazoo doesn't really care, but like Thread hates Kazoo. So <laughs> it's like, so like you wouldn't know, but like, I love what he does. I think he is such a perfect like addition. And then even now, um, he's been more aggressive because I like, I guess I've never realized like how tall he was up until right. like this year. Um, but he actually started to get like a little bit more like in, in your face. And yeah. so he was a little scarier this year. And so he still kind of had that like funny, like, haha, but like, man, there was a couple of times where I saw him like scaring people with stuff like that. And I was like, that is so <laughs> good. <laughs> like, good job. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's like one of my favorites. I would say probably in there's the zone. so many memorable characters this last season. Um, 
off the top of my head, I mean, you're obviously one of them. That's that's a face that I've seen for many years now. Um, <laughs> one that I also was a big fan of this year was uh, Bobbins. <gasps> yes. Yeah, she, I love her. I love what she brought to the table. It was like whole, a whole fancy thing. She's She was one of like the, if not the only, one of the few like girl sliders in Carnival, which we haven't really seen in a very long time. Right. Which I thought was like super awesome. We need awesome. more women sliders. Yes. We need to I start agree. a revolution. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I like, I want to be one of those people that slide, but I just, I, I look so silly when I slide. Like I oh. know how to do it, but I just don't. <laughs> I, uh, I'm just, I, I broke, I broke my ankle like in 2018, I believe it was. And I just, I don't even trust myself to do that anymore. Like I, I want to do it so bad and learn it, but I'm just like so scared and so traumatized. That's just like, I don't want to break an ankle again. It was horrible. Oh my gosh. I know. One like I, I already have bad news to begin with. So it's like, I, I'm like, yeah. You're like, yeah, do they need to get any worse though? Like, right. I'm, like, still, I'm still I'm <laughs> still kind of in my prime with age and I still got a lot I want to do. I don't want to be in a wheelchair by I'm 40. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. No, I I I think though, uh honestly though, for people who out there who slide and do it proper and right, I mean, people can do it and they they're my buddy uh Scott, he Scott Dieterman is just someone an example of someone who's in his he just turned 50 and he's still out there. Like he's in his prime in his twenties. Right. And it's and like, I can only imagine. I was like, dude, how are you not fucking dead by now? Like, <laughs> uh, me and him, we talk shit to each other back and forth. Like we have, right. we have weekly conversations every week and I always bring it up. I'm like, how the fuck are you not dead? Like, some <laughs> of the shit you told me you did at haunt. Like, how are you not dead? Right. It's like, Oh man, some of those old haunt heads, you're just like, you, you could do what you make the guys from jackass look like rookies. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and it's like, damn, but no, I, I, I think it's it's really cool and I, I'm I'm always in support of more women sliders. Um I was surprised to not really see I the first time I actually went to Six Flags this year, uh I saw one woman slider. Wow. I, I believe. I think I only saw one and it was my good friend Tricks the Trickster. Um oh. Yeah, she she is basically in the in a carnival version of uh, Six Flags called City Under Siege, which is all clowns too, and that'd be a lovely crossover. I'd love to see. I'd love to see <laughs> the Siege people come over to Carnival and play for a night. That'd be really fun. That would be cool, like especially because like Dark Harbor was mostly clowns too. Right. That's why I feel like a lot of them ended up being in Carnival because that was kind of more their element. Right. And a lot of their slider team, and I can only imagine like Cardio next year, like, cause you know, like there's the one year you can't slide your first year, you can't slide roll. Yeah. So I imagine, cause I know like, I know Jasper slides, Tyler slides. They all uh, slide. I've seen them all yeah, do yeah. it. And they, Jan, Cherry, I, I think, yeah, all of them. So I could, if they all come back to Carnival, like. I don't, I don't even they think. They like a wrecking team. Honestly, too, if we're being real, I don't even think. I think for me personally, like it would add a touch to her character, but Cherry, she held herself pretty good this year. Cherry's a baddie. She's one of my favorites. <laughs> I was blown away by what she accomplished and how fast a fan base she grew just working at night. Oh my God, I know. And like, that's the cool stuff. That, that's really like kind of the cool thing I feel like is happening with Haunt right now. If you really notice, a lot of like the uh, staple characters, I guess, in most of the zones are women. Yeah. Nowadays, I mean, look at Ghost Town. You have you have Lucy. You got bride. Um, the bride. You got uh, oh, what's her name? Um, man, I forget her name, but she's like the Native American. She's like the Native yes. American. Wife. Very talented. Yes, Very talented. Her, they have like there's a lot of like staple oh, the girls. Women are taking over, man. I'm telling you. I mean, even hey. in uh, freaking the other one, um, camp. They, the, oh, all the all the witches and stuff. The witches, then, um, Olive's character. Yeah, no, there's, and I, I feel like it's it's needed now more than ever. Um, mm -hmm. I I feel like it's been for the past you know couple decades, it's been mostly male dominant, and mm -hmm. I think oh, it's absolutely. it's time for a change, and I think it's time because, like I said earlier in the show. Harley Quinn now is one of those characters that is a fucking badass. You, right. You look at her more. She's it's 
it's honestly, it's good to say she's getting more popularity now than the Joker. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think all of her videos and stuff are like awesome. Or yeah. videos, movies. Yeah, movies <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I agree. I There was a big change this year and a lot of more uh, women coming out and, and just dominating the fucking haunt scene this year. And mm -hmm. I saw it across every park that I went to. I mean, mm -hmm. you look at Halloween Horror Nights this year. What was Universal Monsters? The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. Right. And it tied into a scare zone called the Scream Queens, which was, you know, all made up versions of sequel ideas of these iconic monsters kids. Right, uh, exactly. Which was awesome. And then, you know, you go over to Six Flags. Um, they had a lot of uh, women stilt walkers. They had a lot of, I, I saw a lot of women play a lot of uh, great roles and iconic roles, especially their most iconic character um, on Exile Hill, which is such mm -hmm. a creepy character, by the way. <laughs> I, I was by, walking by it and I was just like, oh my God, this is unsettling. But that character is essentially one of the faces, if not the face of Fright Fest now. And mm -hmm. then you look at Knott's, yeah, you're right. Every zone this year was there was a lot of a female dominant, and I freaking and I'm all for it, man. Let's let's get more female sliders out there. Let's get more female stilt walkers out there. Let's let's get more female things out there because <laughs> I feel like it, it's it's time that we sh everyone shares the spotlight together and everyone mm -hmm. has a good time and collaborations come. Great. You know, especially with you and your character, uh, you're having a, a kind of a a good partnership going with vulgar and mm -hmm. you guys are continuing that storyline. Uh, but now you're seeing new people enter the, the equation and you're just like, well, shit, do we, uh, do we still tell them that we're the ones in charge or do we see what they got? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's like, what like do we do? <laughs> it's almost like a passing of the torch in a way. You know what I mean? It's like, you've been there that long that you have the right mm -hmm. to pass that torch if you want to. But mm -hmm. I don't think that's the case. I think thread's going to come out for blood next this year. <laughs> <laughs> no exactly like i i love it um a good thing that mark told me he said that um a high tide raises all ships so it doesn't matter i guess as long as we're all doing good like yeah we're all as long as we are, are all in one cohesive unit we're gonna we're gonna be successful i mean and that's yeah. just kind of how it is and just the fact that like having like cherry and bobbin and you know and everybody i mean um there was a couple of rookies on there that were really like badass. Um, freaking uh, Juki, she was really good with her little chocolate. Right. Um, and then we had, of course, our like original staples. We had like me, Joker, uh, Vulgar, etc. Oh, you know, Joker is yeah. That guy's all right. I've seen. Better. I don't want to give him credit, yeah, but I will. It's just you know. <laughs> I personally I think I personally think you're better than him, but that's just me. You know, I think <laughs> I think knock him down a couple. Of I, I think everyone in that zone is better than him, but that's just me. <laughs> but you know, that's just me. Hey, he was like our <laughs> only like really good slider for like a couple of years. So like, yeah, I can't wait to see what happens next year, man. He's gonna be like, oh shit, I got competition now. Yeah, now he's gonna now he's really gonna have to fight for it. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm just saying this year, please, you have my permission. Give him hell. <laughs> oh, I do every year. <laughs> oh man that, um, guy's, that guy's something else though i i, I joker you know i love you don't even i'm like yeah, i'm like here he's like he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna call me on xbox he's like you're a fucking bitch bro I hate you. that's what he always <laughs> he calls me. me be like stop stop talking about me <laughs> i'm like you know what i don't care <laughs> he hates it we pressure him every week like when are you gonna be on the podcast i'm not ready yet i'm like stop being a fucking what is a baby so shy about I don't know. I'm gonna give him a hard time. I'm gonna give, give him a really hard time. This, after we're done with this, I'm gonna be like, "So why would you get on the podcast?" <laughs> <laughs> then I'm gonna get a text from him, "Fuck you, bitch." I'm like, hey, what did I do? I'm just, I'm a host. I'm just doing my job. I'm giving the people what they want. Right. Exactly. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm so glad that you had a great returning year, and I'm so glad that you've had a great long story to tell with your haunt career and something that you can hopefully look back at. When, if you ever want to start a family or if you ever just, you know, passing down knowledge to other people, you can, it's something mm -hmm. that you can look back at and be like, well, this is what I was doing. This is how I developed my character and this is how right. it went. And mm -hmm. I hope even a couple of years from now, we can look back at this episode and be like, wow, how much that character has evolved and 
Right. When it's time for you to hang it up, I can go, go back to this episode and I'm like, damn, that's the end of an era. <laughs> oh man. I know the day that I hang up for it is going to be such a hard day. Even if I'm going into like a different zone or whatever, not like fully leaving hot, like thread's been my bread and butter for so long. It's like hard to, it would be hard to be different to, or like to feel, be something different. And like, like, for example, like, um, milk, Matthew, and yeah. like, um, like how he, his character, he was like the mime and carnival for so long, but then he like came such a staple and then like goes down. I don't, I'm not saying that would happen to me, but like, if it did, like, I feel like I would still have that like clown, like shield on my heart. Like, oh, hands oh. down. Because you know, in your heart and fans know that you were an important piece of that puzzle. You were, oh. you were part of something that, uh, along with uh, many other people brought a story to life that thousands upon thousands of people each night enjoyed. And oh. <laughs> it, it was, you you were part of something special, especially that year you guys, you know, last year when you guys won scare zone of the year, mm-hmm. you know, it's something that, you know, regardless, you can say I was part of, from what I hear, it's been a long time since they even won scare zone of the year. And you were like my favorite team, the LA Dodgers, you came back <laughs> and you won a world series championship and now you can go off and, just something you can look back at and be proud of. And I really hope this year brings up like, um, like oh, we can only go up from here. I really hope that like, that's going to be the mentality going in. Oh yeah. And, and I think what I think a lot of people who work in Carnival's mindset is going into this year was we may have won it this year, but let's continue the streak. Let's continue right. pushing harder than we ever have each and every year to continue to be the top scare zone. Right. I really want people to, that's the thing, like, like I said earlier is like how, uh, carnival was like the stepping stone zone for such a long time. Right. But, and like, everybody's like end game is ghost. Right. Mm -hmm. And I really want that to change. Like I love my ghost town. I love ghost town peeps. Like don't get me wrong, but I want, I really want carnival to be like, this is, this is an end game for me. This is where I want to be. Like, I feel like that would be so awesome. And it's not like a punishment anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, hands down. I mean, I told you in the beginning of the show and before the show too, that if I were to scare at any scare zone, it would, it would be carnival because mm-hmm. like I said before, I, I just feel the most myself there. I, I could be myself. I can be funny. I can be, if I wanted to, I could be scary. I mean, you have this six foot six guy walking towards you. You're telling me you're not going to be intimidated. Like, Oh man, I'm telling you. Yeah. Imagine uh, you should wear a cop one year. What one of these years you should, I, I, I get told that every, every single year and it's, I'm sure it's, it's a passion and I got to actually do something last Halloween at a home haunt. Um, and I got to experience that, that kind of life and I, it's safe to say I, I had a lot of fun doing it. It's super fun. Yeah. yeah. I was, I remember doing what before my, before I started haunt, um, I did a home haunt with, uh, Cliff. Um, I don't know if you know who he is, but he was also in carnival. Um, he actually, uh, I went to high school with his cousin. So his cousin was like, Oh, my cousin's a really big haunt fan. And like, so are you. So, and he does this little thing in Halloween. And I think that's kind of where like it all started. So it all kicked off. Right. And it's like how much I actually really like love like scaring people. I was like, man, Yeah. no, (laughs) I, uh, I had a fun time. Um, I was a medieval dinosaur from the year 3000. I'm obsessed. That's so funny. <laughs> I, 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 and I, I took that character to a whole new level. Like I, I went above and beyond. I did the stupidest things that you would probably see on carnival. I mean, I had a fucking, I had a whistle in my mouth, even though I was wearing a mask and I was That's blowing funny. the whistle. Like the, 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 my, and the, the cool thing was the people that I was in that room with, sold it so well that when they started when I started incorporating the whistle like an hour or two in they immediately changed the story just because of me and that was be careful when you turn the corner the dinosaurs whistle before they attack and I would be at the end of the hallway ready to freaking sprint at them and blow my whistle towards them and I would talk in such a high pitch voice that it had <laughs> nothing to do with what was going on in that room, but I was getting so many laughs from the the people that that ran the haunt and the people that were in the room with me that I just kept going. Oh and my god! 
to this day, the best scare that I've ever done was, and I, I still, and I, I bring it up all the time because I still don't know the science behind this. I scared someone so hard a shoelace fell off. I'm obsessed. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I I don't know how I did it. It's it's probably it once in a, it's probably once in a lifetime, and I'm okay with that. But that was probably I, I remember picking up the shoelace. Like, did I just scare someone out of their shoelace? Like, did this really just happen? I'm telling you, everybody has like that one like that one story of like. Did that really just happen? Like, oh my god! <laughs> yep, I was hit that night. That was that was fun. I was uh, little kids trying to act tough in front of me, and that was cute. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I made a girl throw her phone in the air, and then I picked it up immediately after and acted like I was talking on it. And she came back and she was scared to grab it from me. So, You're like, sorry, but I had a lot fine. of fun. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, towards the end of the night, I told my one of the partners, and when it just came down to me and her, because the other guy had to leave. Mm-hmm. I told her, I eventually just told her, just give me random shit to say and yell out at people. I mean, I yelled out waffles are better than pancakes. I yelled out Jurassic Park was right. I yelled out just so many absurd and random things that I I, I actually enjoyed myself. And I, I had a good time. And if I would do it for a full season, I don't know if I can commit to that. Only because you would have to. <laughs> I would have to. You're right, but it's just it's it's my mindset was, if I commit to a full season, then who's gonna cover you guys? Who's gonna spotlight you guys? True. And I, that's one of my favorite things every year doing in Haunt is compilations and videos, vlogs, everything, and I just love doing exactly. it so much. So it's a, it's a hard decision because I deep down inside I really want to. But mm-hmm. at the same time, I'm just like, well, who's going to do Nights of Horror when I'm gone? Like, I, I, I want to continue to do Nights of Horror, but I. So now I've, I've officially decided if any home haunt would love to have me for a night, I would happily go and do it. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And it's definitely like if you went to have like your shtick, it's like it's really hard to leave, as we've been talking about. Yeah. And if you're, yours is like the podcast and the videos and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, that's your jam. Like. I love it so much. It is. Right. It's it's a a part of my life that I'm glad I started and uh, would never take it back for a second. Now, five years later. Right. And we've evolved and grew so much. And if you watch the very first video that we ever made on this channel compared to where we're at now, I guarantee you uh, some tattoos were added at that point. And (laughs) um, we've gotten way better at talking and talking with people. So Mm -hmm. it was a practice. I love it. I love that. That's what so awesome. Wouldn't change it for the world. <laughs> Final two questions I have to ask you before we sign off, and I'm surprised, you know, we, we kept going this long, and this has been a very fun podcast and just a lot of information. Um, oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Maddie, I'm having a great time. I very much thank you for that and taking the time out of a Friday night to do this. It's <laughs> Oh, of course. No, yeah. Awesome I guess I'm having a blast. <laughs> yeah, it's been a lot of fun, um, and I know this is something you've been wanting to do for some time too. I, I you, mm-hmm. I remember you telling me this. I remember you, you said you watched uh, Naomi's podcast with uh, with Billy, and and that was a lot of fun uh, mm-hmm. when we when we did those back in 2019. So I, I'm glad that we finally get to tell your story now, and <laughs> and just continue to see where your character goes from here. So, final two questions I have to ask you uh, as a haunt fan. Um, if you can work another haunt for just one night, uh, and it could be anywhere in the world or it could be local, where would you want to go just for one night, just just to see how they do things or just to see what you can do over there? Queen, back Queen. when Queen was a thing. Mm-hmm. It's I, I I got some news for you. <laughs> Queen is going to be a thing in twenty twenty three. Mark my words. You think so? They oh. got they got funding and they're finally starting construction on the repairs of the ship which is a lot of good uh, hopes for it. They said it's going to take all really this year to do, which mm-hmm. is fine. Um, right. But that's giving me high hopes for Queen to return. And I want Queen to return. Uh, I only I went the first time in 2019, and I loved it. And then it didn't happen in 2020 because of COVID. And then it didn't happen in 2021 because of the boat. Right. Now I'm hoping it happens in 2021. Ugh, the thing is, is like I'm so torn because it's like yes, like Queen's cool. Like I like that. If like I said, if I had to pick somewhere else, that's probably where I'd go. Right. But I don't want to lose my people. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, like, I, I bonded so hard with them. Like I don't want them. I don't want them to have to like make the decision on staying or going because I'm always gonna say it. Not like 
Oh yeah, hands down. Like, because that's my home base, and I can understand like why they wouldn't want to leave clean, but like, don't go. <laughs> no, this is this is in 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 just a uh, imagination and everything. It was one night. You're invited to any haunt you want to go to to scare at once, and uh, you had the freedom to obviously make your character how you want to, or you maybe got permission to do bring thread over to another circus and see how she plays with those people. Right. Yeah, the, I think it would definitely be queen. Continuing the uh, the uh, the KCU, the not cinematic universe. <laughs> we got uh, one in Canada. Now we got one at Long Beach and Dark Harbor. Uh, how does this go? Right. So, start meeting up. Start make meeting the, up and planning and plotting and whatnot. <laughs> I, I would love to see Thread uh, play one night in, in Queen Mary. I think that'd be very interesting. It'd be a new environment for her and... Mm-hmm. There's an actual circus there, so she can go play in the circus too. Right, exactly. It would be like just meshing right on over. That's awesome. So now that obviously the last question I want to ask, um, you being a haunt fan, are you a big horror fan too? Like, yes, <laughs> but um, I'm. I don't want to say recent horror fan because I would probably. I really didn't really start watching like horror movies and stuff until probably high school and then even then like I have a very like particular taste when it comes to horror like I hate like gory stuff and like that kind of stuff like I just I don't find it scary I just kind of like meh like whatever and like I work in healthcare so it's like I deal with kind of like nasty stuff in real life you're like I've seen the real thing that says nothing (laughs) right and it's like so to me it's like kind of like I really like that like thriller stuff that's kind of like where I'm at a little bit more right um so I do love horror but it's definitely like i like horror because i've been in like a horror community <laughs> right uh that being said i always love to ask the guests this and this usually is the hardest question for a lot of guests but mm-hmm. there's some guests that just have an answer like that what is your favorite scary movie man depends <laughs> right, we're talking a- like there's a lot of yeah. subgenres in horror. I know that. Um, just overall, one that either made you feel uncomfortable, either made you feel like think about things in real life, or whatever it may be. Just something that just made you feel unease. Recently, I'm gonna say Midsummer. Okay. Because just because, like, the thing about Ari Aster, like her movies, I've noticed is it's there is a lot of like slow buildup. Right. But that last 30 minutes will just like F you up. Oh, <laughs> hands down. I, I remember like, watching Hereditary. And yes, I actually just watched that for the first time the other day. That, Wild. That movie, I mean, and then it's it's one of those movies you gotta watch multiple times because there's a lot of hidden things that you didn't see the first time. Mm-hmm. And like when I started, like my uncle and I were obsessed with that film. Like we, I think we would watch it like twice a weekend. Like wow. we would watch it and just be like, "Did you see that fucking person up in the hill just just sitting there looking at the house, bro? Like that's <laughs> so fucking creepy." Like right. we would just start noticing all the people and all the like subliminal messages and shit. And yeah, I mean, I I wasn't a huge fan of Midsummer, but I respected it for what it was. And right. I, I'm a huge fan of uh, Florence Pugh now. Um, yeah, such a talented actress. Mm-hmm. Um, but to see her take on the the messages that that were in that film very much interested me of of her going through sadness and grief to her yes. kind of being forced onto this trip, and then her going from that sadness to grief to kind of confused and uncomfortable mm-hmm. to her finally just embracing who she is and what she became. Right, exactly. So it, it is a wild journey, and it really – and talk about more subliminal messaging. I mean, my favorite scene in that film is where you see the subliminal message of the trees having the face mask of the sister on there towards the end of the film. And, yes. oh, my God, that, that messed me up. That movie messed me up. That's the thing is, like, those those movies that really, like, sit there and just, like, make you think for a minute. Right. Those are the ones that I like really enjoy. And you, they don't necessarily even have to be like horror movies um, because like, I'm also like a really big history buff too. And so like, like another movie that did that to me, that's not really a horror movie is like the boy in the striped pajamas. Yeah. Um, which is all about like the Holocaust and stuff. Same thing with me and, and Schindler's list. I was, yes. Oh it's like, you really just like those movies that you just make you sit there and just like think it's like, well, I, I think, and, and especially 
going off, you know, this, the story of Schindler's List, too, it's like, this guy started as a Nazi supporter and mm-hmm. wanted to do it for the money and the business. But then as the movie progresses, he starts seeing the suffering the, the Jewish people have to go through. Mm-hmm. And you start seeing him start getting a change of heart. And by the end of the film, after the war ends, he's like crying. Like, I, I could have saved more. Like, I could have. Like, I had the power to do it and I just didn't act on it. Like, I could have. And you start seeing throughout the movie as he starts getting more of a heart that he starts bringing more people in just to save them. Right. And it's just such an emotional film that, you know, that's a piece of history that actually happened. And the fact that that man eventually gained a heart and was doing good and and saving a lot of them uh, Mm -hmm. is just it's just it's touching really is. Right. Exactly. No, I I, and another thing I love, too, is when uh, a person who does this, too, on history. When you take history, but then change it and make an alternate history. Uh, <laughs> my favorite director of all time, Quentin Tarantino, is is famous oh, for doing that. Inglorious Bastards. Inglorious right Bastards. He did it in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> my um, favorite. He did it in Django Unchained where, you know, Jamie Foxx played, obviously, um, at the time, a slave. And a lot of people don't get the message of that movie. The the guy was a slave, and he ends up being the hero at the end of the film. He ends up being free right. and going away with his wife, and so he beat the bad people. Like, right? It's a it's a great it's a great message when you think about it. Yeah, the language is out there, but I mean, the message overall is this guy coming up from nothing to being a someone and taking down the guy who killed the guy who had a, took a chance on him. Right, yeah, though those three movies are probably my top three favorite Tarantino movies. Tarantino, I mean, guy's a genius, and sad mm-hmm. to say, he's got one left in him, and he's hanging it up, and that that no. makes me very sad. No, when I saw on the trailer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when it came out, it said the ninth film from Quentin Tarantino. I was like, that only means there's one left, because he only said he's doing ten, and he's hanging it up, and I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> yeah no that one and like the hateful eight i think are probably it's oh, probably like hateful eight was just such a good whodunit film right that uh pulp <sighs> fiction pulp fiction that's a classic right? phenomenal. I feel like it, it's almost a little too cliche to say pulp fiction right like, that's fine but like you know what i mean like are you really a tarantino fan if you're gonna say pulp fiction I'm exactly <laughs> no I, I i most recently in glorious bastards was my favorite movie of all time and then once upon a time in hollywood came out and i fell in love with the nostalgia of 60s hollywood and everything so Right. A lot and, of good actors still, too. Yeah. A quick story before we wrap up, but it's funny yeah. we brought up uh, Tarantino. Uh, I went to have dinner one night with some of the Queen Mary Sliders after we did a photo shoot with them. And uh, out of the bloom, like, I didn't mention Tarantino. I didn't mention anything. A couple of the guys were like, hey, this guy said he doesn't tip. And I'm like, <gasps> you don't tip? <laughs> what do you mean you don't tip? <laughs> And they all started like busting up laughing because I got the reference immediately, uh, and we were in a restaurant and everything, so it just, just was so perfect timing. So, oh my gosh, uh, I, I love. That. I'm a nerd at movies. I'm a nerd in comics. I'm a nerd in video games. I am an overall geek of just everything sci-fi. I am proud to say it because I've been a geek since it was popular to be one. Um, yep. And I will continue. And even when I have a family of my own, whether I have a daughter or a son, I will force them to be geeks. <laughs> It's in our bloodline. My dad, massive Superman fan. You would think I'm I'd be a you. massive Superman fan, but I'm a massive Batman fan. So <laughs> it, it's just in our genetics. And I'm gonna I wanna continue to pass down for when I have a family of my own. And uh who's ever gonna be my future wife in the future, uh, I'm very sorry ahead of time. Uh, but you knew this was coming. My kids You're are like, gonna be just like me. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's 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 fate. It's meant to be. I love that. Maddie, awesome. it has been so amazing and awesome to finally meet and talk with you about not only who you are as a person, but who you are as Thread and how you want to move forward and continue to pass down the torch to the future people who come on and just continue to thrive in your haunt career. Thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I had such a great time. I really love coming out here and like talking about what I'm really passionate about because I know it's like, it's hot and it's like, it's such a niche 
like demographic, but I mean, it's our demographic. And I really like being able to share that, how much I love it with other people who are like-minded or even people who are just trying to get in. I mean, when I started, I mean, I, I knew who people were, but like, it was nowhere near to where we are now when right. it comes to like social media and all that kind of stuff. So I'm really happy to like share my story, share everything. Right. I, and and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm glad that, uh, initially when I, when I invited you on, I, I, I was just glad to find out that you were just happy to come on. Um, mm-hmm. and that's, that's what I want to provide a space where, you know, anyone in the world and here's a little, little mental health rant because, you know, I'm a, I'm a big mental health supporter. Um, anyone in the world that's having a bad day or is going through an all time low, this content that we make here on this channel is meant to for you to get away for however long it could be anywhere from five minutes to two hours. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I we just want to get your mind off things and hopefully you can relate to a lot of these characters, a lot of these people who play these characters and overall just relate to them and hopefully mm-hmm. they can give you an insight of how they got in and maybe it can give you some tips on how you got, how you can get in. Um, or if you just, if you're just a fan and you just want to learn more and enjoy it, this is a place of, positivity, laughter. Um, sometimes it can get sad if the, if the story calls for it, but for the most part, this is a place where everyone can enjoy something. And if you're mm-hmm. a haunt fan, I promise you, you'll love what you see on this channel. Exactly. Absolutely. And amen. Amen to that. <laughs> uh, with all that being said, uh, where can we find you? Uh, where can we find more of thread on social media? Um, I do have an Instagram. It's a BS underscore thread uh, with an E at the end. Cause that's her name. Thread day. Thread day. Yeah. It's French. Okay. I'm just thread day. <laughs> Russian didn't work. So she's going French now. Right. I'm French now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's my like social media handle. Uh, my, if you want to follow me in real life, it's Azzy Kins. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I love it. Um, I'm constantly seeing you hang out with Naomi and all them. So like I say, quoting from one of my favorite streamers of all time, next time you see him, give him the love for me because I do miss those those kids. And, and they, they, mm-hmm. they are another great talents that we've had on the show in the past. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I can't wait to see what you guys have in store for 2022. Um, let's hope by, by the time haunt season comes around, we're a little bit better in the world as far as, uh, as COVID goes. But if not, let's, let's, let's have a fun and safe one and let's just make the most of it because you never know tomorrow might be the last day, but we got to live every day. Like it is the last day. So absolutely enjoy life because, uh, every day is, every day is a gift to be alive. Mm -hmm. So, um, and another thing to wrap everything up, obviously with mental health, if you guys are going through anything at all, at all, our DMS on nights of horror are always open gone through i've gone through personally i I can't say we as a group but it's mostly me um i've gone through a lot of things in my past and everything currently recently um but i have a lot of great friends and i got a great therapist and i got a lot of great um support from fans and friends and family um so if you're going through anything uh we're always open to talk seek help with uh seek some talking time with some friends or if, if you don't feel comfortable at all doing any of that, um, the best thing that works for me, and I know it's not for everyone, but I always tell people at least try it once or twice to see if it's for you. Uh, therapy. It, it's very helpful, and, it, and, it, and it's very um, – it's helped me a lot with a lot of things recently. So um, mm-hmm. just know you're not alone in the world and that mm-hmm. you, are, you, you have value. You are – loved and you um you mean the world to someone out there so with all that being said uh maddie again thank you so much for being on the show and uh maybe next time you come on we could do one with just you know you and lucy or something or you and oh that'd be awesome yeah whatever. yeah definitely. that'd be exciting anything i mean I'm, I'm always open to suggestions i'm always open to having more people come back so Thank you so much for being on, and uh, I can't wait to see what's new with you for 2022. Yay, I'm excited. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. No problem. With all that being said, people, if you guys enjoyed today's video, hit that like button. And uh, if you guys are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button because we have way more uh, interviews coming out soon with uh, other monsters, um, 
could be celebrities, could be artists, could be composers. I don't know. Who's ever in the horror community will have them on. <laughs> um, follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and follow us on Twitter at Knights of Horror. And uh, check out our merch shop. We got uh, some, some sweet merch up, so definitely check that out. Until then, I'm your host, Anthony. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of the Miles Horror Podcast. We are back, baby. It felt so good doing a podcast again. <laughs> uh, and we will see you guys next time for another one.